two, one. It's Video Friday, everybody. Welcome to TLDcast. <laughs> And as you can see, this is the world because we don't have our usual host, Brent Schlenker. I'm Sam Rogers, and this is a um, live beatbox flute from my buddy Ron Kali. He's going to be throwing down a little video Friday with us today here on TLBC. Hope you like what we got in store, and there's been plenty more to come. <laughs> well, there'll be plenty more to come. Yes, uh, what have you signed on to, Craig? Um, this is TLD Cast, the training, learning, and development community. Thanks so much for being here. And I don't have the usual script to start <clears throat> or the mid-roll break. Craig, if you'd like to send that to me, that'd be awesome. Um, or any of the, the usual things. But uh, Broncar Lee is not the, the usual kind of guest for pretty much anything. Um, having been uh, a guest on uh, some other things that you may have heard of, like maybe The Tonight Show or Madison Square Garden or, you know, things like that. Um, very happy to have him with us here today. Broncar, why don't you say just a little bit about who you are and what you do? Uh, yeah, well, I'm a, a keynote speaker and a coach and a author and a dad. And uh, yeah, uh, I guess I would I would best describe myself as a lifelong learner. I, I love learning and I love being a student. I love being a teacher. Um, yeah, just reaching, stretching and, 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 and growing. <laughs> Great. Well, thanks for all that you do. And um, one of the reasons I wanted to have you on here today uh, Bronkar and I have known each other for a while, uh, but I didn't, uh, I didn't have him on sooner because it wasn't quite in alignment with learning and development, but it's getting more and more crossover. So you've written a book about learning. You've got a whole course about learning. You speak at keynotes about learning, um, but you're kind of out of the realm of the learning and development kind of corporate world that, that I'm in. Um, being a lifelong learner and um, and developing as you have your your learning methodology, um, how has that how has that worked for you? What what was it that made um, that made your own learning turn into something that you could share with others? Yeah, that's a good question. Um... I, I think I think giving myself permission to learn in the in the in the way that I learn was was a big epiphany. I uh, my my learning adventures have been interesting. I actually dropped out of high school uh, when I was in high school, and uh, and 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 kind of thought I was a bad learner, and that uh, you know I had a really I had a really hard time through. I mean, honestly, elementary, middle, and high school. And then when I dropped out, I just, you know, got a regular job, whatever that means, regular job or a few. And about five years later, I had this itch to go back and finish high school, uh, which, you know, may not sound like a very big deal to many, many people. But, uh, you know, for me, it was it was kind of a big deal. And that what happened in that in that transition was I had to cram four years of science into two weeks and I considered myself a terrible learner at the time. So um, I, I crammed and I studied for, you know, 8, 10, 12 hours a day. It was just insanity. And then I aced the test and it was so weird. And I was like, well, I'm terrible at science. And this is funny, mind you, because my father uh, is retired now, but was a professor in biochemistry at the University of Georgia for over 40 years. <laughs> the fact that his son dropped out of high school was just... Um, not uh, not what he had anticipated happening. Um, so so but this this um, small piece of validation that may seem in, insignificant to many people uh, was such a catalyst for me to start uh, on this path of, of, of really being passionate about learning. Uh, and, and because of my non-traditional um, uh, route, right, or path, uh, it's allowed me to kind of um, develop a, a, a less traditional um, approach for it. Mm -hmm. Great. And with uh, all that you've 
that you've been working, could you say just a little bit about like what that, what that formula is that you're working with or what it is that you speak about with, uh, with your keynotes and stuff like that? Like some basic yeah. tenets? Yeah. I guess some of the, like the basic outline is a lot of it's about, um, you know, a lot of it's about getting in the right headspace, you know, kind of getting in that, that growth mindset as Carol Dweck writes about, uh, you know, being in the, uh, the serial learner mindset, uh, and, and, you know, and that's, I, I, I like to make the connection of like when we were, when we were kids, uh, you know, many of us don't remember, uh, what it was like to be, you know, to be living in those formative years when we were learning the basics of, you know, crawling, walking, talking, drooling, all of those essential skills, you know, <laughs> and, uh, but, but looking back and now I have, I have two boys of my own and, and watching their process in learning these things, it's fascinating uh, because it gives you that aerial perspective. You know, it's like the kind of like future version of yourself. You know, we're always like, hey, what would you say to the past version of yourself? You know, and it, this gives you that unique uh, perspective on on learning and development because you're watching this other human. Uh, so it's and, and they're like yours. So it's kind of kind of <laughs> metacognition in a way. It's, you know, it's one of those bizarre places to be. But but so so, so tapping into the psychology of it, though, and, and getting into that mode of of really viewing the world and new challenges as um, opportunities. You know, it's like there's kind of one of two ways to, to, to approach these, these challenges. It's one, and, and, and life in general, one is to be paralyzed by perfection, which there's nothing wrong with perfection. I'm definitely an incredibly meticulous person when it comes to things like writing a book or presenting a keynote or whatever it is. Um, but uh, to be paralyzed by perfection or ignited by possibility. And in other words, that's the fixed mindset or the growth mindset, whereas um, you know, I work with a lot of leaders and leadership too. And when, um, you know, uh, uh, being in that, that leadership role, there's such an expectation to be perfect, you know, and to be the guru, you know, and it's just like, but the reality is, is we're just humans, you know, and, and we're figuring out as we go as well. So to be open for those uh, possibilities and to view those challenges as, uh, as opportunities to, to learn something new and reach and stretch and grow and create the future uh, upgraded version of ourselves. Um, so really a lot of it's about the psychology and um, I, through my presentations, I demonstrate through, um, you know, the background in entertainment, as you kind of mentioned uh, at the top there. So I think I, people I, saw a little bit of that too. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> I played the flute. Yeah. But uh but yeah, so I play, you know, a couple dozen instruments, you know, uh, sax and flute, piano, guitar, just stuff. Um, uh, yeah. And, and so I love music and learning new, new instruments. And, uh, and so I demonstrate some of those live um, and talk about the learning process and kind of going through uh, the, what, the, what the inner dialogue is um, that's happening to a lot of us uh, when we're learning something new as adults, especially, especially when... Uh, as adults, when we've become masters at one or two things or whatever that uh, the, the the job title is or the description of what we are paid for as professionals, uh, you know, and then it's like so we get really good at those things. Maybe it's one or 10 or 20 or whatever. And we forget what it's like to be in that student, you know, mindset, that learner mindset. And so um, what's going on in that 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 how are we what, what's the narration we're writing in that that inner dialogue? Well, I'd, I'd love yeah. to stop there for just a moment because yeah. um, for all of you who are watching and um, and, you know, saying hi in the chat and all that, um, I'd love to hear, uh, you know, maybe you're speaking for a friend. Maybe it's something that you've heard of. But what's some of the mental dialogue that Broncar is talking about that goes off in your mind? when you are learning something new, when you're, when you're uncomfortable, maybe stumbling over some skills, or, or maybe you just right away have a talent for it. What are some of the things that go off in your mind? Let's throw those into the chat and, and give us a little bit to, uh, to riff off with that. Also, uh, there's a couple questions that have appeared in the, uh, in the question uh, box there below. We'll be getting to those questions just a little later on. If you have any questions that you'd like to ask Bronkar, well, he's not a guru, you know, we're all just <laughs> here learning together. But, uh, but anything that you think would be um, facilitating this discussion. Also, this is Video Friday, and we will be talking a bit about uh, Bronkar's use of video and stuff as well. Um, but, uh, but yeah, thanks, Kim, for throwing some things in. Um, uh, about math and science. 
Um, yeah. Anyone else? Uh, great to see you here on the chat. You know, regulars like Joseph and, and Kara and Kim, uh, Kristen, glad you're here. Josh, awesome. Craig, what are some things that are going off in your mind? Those those kinds of uh, self-talk dialogues or things that you're instructing yourself uh, to be or do or say when you're in the condition where you yourself are learning something new. I'm seeing some, I'm seeing some really good ones here. Uh, this one from Kristen that says my initial reaction is always jealousy uh, of people who are good at the thing I'm struggling with. That's a, that's such a big one. I'm totally with you on that. Uh, uh, Kristen, that's, that's a huge one for me. And that can really be, that really comes back to that question um, of, 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 are we paralyzed by perfection or ignited by possibility? And mm -hmm. Man, that's such a that can either be something that freezes us where we are and just completely, you know, uh, uh, you know, pushes us away, separates us from it. Or it can be something uh, that's that's an inspiration. It's generally one of the two things that, that I I feel as well on that. Either it's a major catalyst, you know, um, or it's a just way too far out of reach kind of thing. Um, yeah. And the jealousy element, too, like it always looks like other people learn faster than us, no matter how fast we learn, no matter what speed, you know, we're learning at. Yeah. Uh, you know, I always feel like I'm behind. I always feel like, you know, oh, everyone else has this except me, you know, yeah. oh, I'm going to ask the stupid question. Yeah. yeah. I, I see another one here too. Sorry, Sam, I'm jumping in. Cause these yeah, are awesome. Ahead. My first reaction is imposter syndrome. Uh, uh, that's awesome. Oh my God. I feel imposter syndrome all the time. And, and <laughs> I feel this because I'm a because I'm a keynote speaker. And so people are like, you, you're coming into our organization to like, you know, teach us. And it's like and I come in and I'm like, oh, my gosh, am I qualified for this? Am I good enough? Am I smart enough? Am I fast enough? Am I enough? Yeah. So I feel that imposter syndrome all the time. That's yeah, that's a oh, <laughs> that's that's the worst. Uh, yeah. And, I, and I'm, you know, I. Uh, you know, I don't know, Sam, if you have any techniques for, for what you, what you do, have you experienced the imposter syndrome one as well? Absolutely not. I'm masterful at everything and was from the moment I was born. Awesome. God, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> have you, have, have you, have you figured out any techniques to deal with the imposter syndrome thing? I, yes. Um, I expect it and I hear it and then I keep doing what I'm doing until I get external input that tells me get the hell out of there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, so I sweat, but keep going generally. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also I'm the first to say when I really don't know something, um, right. Uh, because I don't want to appear like I know something that I don't know and, and say something that misleads people or is embarrassing or stupid or whatever. Um, and uh, as something that that can't be substantiated, I, I saw uh, jokingly in there, I think Kim was throwing in, you know, please don't say learning styles or things like that. Um, I did warn Broncar about that before we got to uh, to this this audience, um, you know, making sure that what what we're saying actually is connecting and resonating at the same level as who we're speaking with, you know, and and making lots of mistakes. I mean all sorts of mistakes. So just try not to make the same ones over and over. Um, some great stuff coming up here in, uh, in all the sharings, the noises from your head. Awesome. Um, so um, saying a little bit more about the, um, the transition to speaking on a stage. So when you're speaking, who are the kinds of audiences that you're brought in to speak to? And the uh, the topics like the titles of the presentations that you're giving. Yeah, uh, gosh, I mean, lots of different types of people. Uh, last year, actually, and, and and you came to one of my presentations with this company. I, I was uh, brought in to to present for government technology, um, and so it was the the the, um, the uh, IT um, departments uh, primarily, uh, et cetera, but. Uh, last year, I did about 30 something dates uh, around the country for this you know, government IT. And uh, and that the focus was uh, my my presentation was called Hacking the Learning Curve. And that's um, that's one that I present uh, quite often. That's kind of like my like signature keynote or whatnot. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, so that was, that was, you know, one that I, that did last year and I'm doing a lot this year as well. Uh, so that's, you know, one type of audience. Uh, I mean, it, um, you know, last month I was on the celebrity cruise ship presenting to their top, uh, you know, top 90 leaders, uh, you know, the people and the captains of the vessels and the chief engineers and HR and all that type of stuff. And, um, you know, really because my topic is so broad, uh, it, it relates to, any industry. I mean, it really doesn't matter if, if we're wanting to stay uh, at least forward thinking uh, people who are, who are wanting to grow and evolve and, and reach and all that. Uh, so it, it, it can be, it can be anybody, honestly. Yeah. And um, back to the hacking of the learning curve. Um, what are some of the, the hacks? Like give us, give us your top three hacks. Well, I mean, the first one we already talked about was getting out of your own way, essentially. I mean, it's kind of like what we're talking about with the imposter syndrome. Uh, it's, uh, you know, what we're talking about with that negative um, uh, narration that can be running on in our heads. That's such a killer. I mean, for adults, uh, it's, well, I mean, kids too, it, it, just humans in general. I mean, it could be that way for dogs as far as I know. I'm not <laughs> sure. But, uh, but the, um, uh, but, but that story that we're telling ourselves, what is that story? Uh, and, and so that's, that's honestly, that's, that's enough right there. If we could just shift that, uh, then, then we're going to be, you know, accelerated learners. Um, and then definitely I would say if I'm narrowing it down to three, I would say, um, I would say, I would say your support, what's your, what's the infrastructure on your support, uh, team or your support system? Uh, mm -hmm. you know, like this, the thing that's happening right now with the message board here, Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and what we're doing, I mean, this is definitely critical. I mean, how valuable is this, uh, to, to have a place to go with like-minded individuals, um, to, to share struggles with as well as successes with, uh, so having that kind of an environment. And I always think of like three main, like, um, I'm kind of a shape shifter, so to speak. I, I assimilate. That's my job is to assimilate to different uh, cultures and different environments quickly so that I can effectively communicate um, a message to people. Right. And that's anybody that works as a facilitator or a coach or, you know, mentor or whatnot. Um, that's essentially what we're doing. We're wanting to speak that language uh, in that way that that's going to uh, resonate uh, or land with people. Um, so I think of three main ways of being or modes of being uh, inside of the uh, support infrastructure or uh, rounding up your crew, so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, there's one is who is your who is your mentor uh, or your master or your coach or that, you know, Jedi figure that that is that is leading you and guiding you and giving you that 30,000 foot perspective. And um, that's a big one, especially for people who are high up on the chain and leadership. A lot of them don't have that. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and so that's a, that's a huge one. Uh, so having that type of person, that's your guide essentially. Um, and then the second is who are your like-minded peers? Who are the people that are kind of in the same job title or type of role as you? Like maybe if you're in management or leadership or whatnot, um, who are those other managers, uh, or people that are leaders that you're, you know, uh, keeping constant contact with, right. And, and, and being accountable to and with, and then the third is who are you teaching? Who are you sharing with? Who are you guiding and leading yourself? And all three of those serve each other. I mean, I learn, I learn as much or more from the people that I coach or, or mentor, um, as, as, as they're getting from me. And, uh, and then same on all levels of that. So all three of those are really critical to have, uh, uh working for us simultaneously. So having that, um, uh, that infrastructure uh, being really sound is I, I found is critical. Uh, and then I'd say if I had to sum up in a third point, um, I would say the scientific application of things, which is kind of what I mean by that is um, how do we how do we measure the data and then uh, and then and then really be able to learn from it quickly and effectively. Uh, as you said a moment ago, Sam, you know, not making the same mistake over and over again. And, and that's a critical one. And some skills are harder to measure than others. Uh, you know, we've all tried to identify uh, the fun balance of soft skills and hard skills or life skills or whatever. And we try to put all these things into, into boxes and compartmentalize them and everything. Um, but certain skills are just, uh, uh, without giving them a title, are harder to, to measure, harder to quantify, harder to gather data on. Mm -hmm. And so I find that if we're 
if we're constantly in the flow of life and we're gathering, we're, we're creating space to have intention setting time and reflection time and those two ways of being, then we're able to um, uh, gather data. Well, that's analog version or digital version, whichever way you want to use it. Um, but uh, to gather that data and then to take the time to reflect on it and to analyze it and to identify what are the patterns here? What can we learn from that? Oh, I'm doing this every day, five times a day. And this is a pattern that could be detrimental to me, to my health or my whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And, and then see that pattern, identify it and then say, okay, well, that's either a preferred pattern that I'd like to create more of, or that's a, a less preferred pattern or a suboptimal one that I would like to uh, learn from as quickly and effectively as possible and then and then change that up. Great. So there's been some some good uh, comments coming on here in the chat too. So I, I, I just, just was putting it out there to the community. Um, who is your mentor? Who are your peers? Who are you teaching? And uh, as Deborah responds, that's a tough question for solopreneurs. Um, it, it certainly can be. However, I'm one, Broncar, you're one. Um, yeah. As someone who's not working within um, the infrastructure of an organization, but is speaking to organizations with infrastructures, um, how is it that you yourself have answered these questions? I mean, you are the world's only rhythmic juggling beatboxer. You're, you know, like the peers are not common. So how is it that you're, that you're answering these questions yourself, not sitting in a company where there's like someone who's assigned to you as a mentor or your peers have the same job title or something? You mean, you mean, how am I, um, how am I finding my, the infrastructure or my support team? Yeah. 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 Um, geez. Yeah. I wish it was linear. (laughs) I wish it was a, I wish it was an answer that I could give you on a spreadsheet, uh, but uh, the reality is, is it's not. Uh, I mean, I, I I lead with the intention that um, I I um, I have things to learn, and uh, I'd like to learn X, Y, and Z. So I'm leading with that intention, and I just start. I mean, it's happened in so many different ways. I mean, for example, I'll give you this one. Um, right now I'm a a member of the national speakers association and I'm the incoming president of the Georgia chapter. Uh, and that, um, that journey has been a fascinating one. And, and, um, inside of that, just showing up to meetings and, and searching for people, asking questions, asking open-ended questions to get to know people. Mm -hmm. And then when they answer in, you know, this fashion or that fashion, I say, oh, well, I like the way you phrase that, or I feel like I have something I could learn from you, or I feel like I could offer something to you. So it happens kind of organically, Um, you know, uh, but, but, you know, getting, getting in, in the, in the vicinity of those people uh, is, is, is the key. So like, I mean, showing up today, obviously uh, for learning and development. Um, Yeah. So it it doesn't really happen linearly. Uh, That's just not, I think so you, you don't fill out a formal application and submit it to someone on the, on the street or, you know, who, ha, who wrote I, a book or. I think it, I think it comes from really, you know, um, self-awareness, spatial awareness, awareness in general, just being aware, being aware of what we're looking for and being aware of um, when it actually shows up. And it's like, Oh, that's the thing that I was just talking about. Oh, it's here. Oh, okay, cool. I'll take that. Great. So having some some supports, and then um, you're also speaking about the the reflective kind of analytical time, as yeah. well as the the doing and data gathering time. Um, there's some other good comments going on here about gathering data. Yesterday, uh, we had a fantastic guest uh, here talking about analytics of learning and how it is that we show value, how it is that we that we track and measure the value of learning. Yeah. Um, how, what are some of the kinds of things that you're tracking when you're tracking learning a new skill? Hmm. It depends on the skill. It really does. I mean, there's a big difference between learning a new musical instrument or uh, learning how to, I'm going to admit the fact that I got into Rubik's cubing uh, about a year and a half ago. I just found, I don't know what really, well, my best friend is a cuber. Uh, he's like a, you know, Aaron, he's a, yeah, yeah. he's a mathematical genius. Like he just, gosh, he's I, also he can, a fantastic tap dancer and, uh, 
singer and all sorts of things. Yeah. Oh, multi. He's a, a Crazy, music yeah. teacher and plays everything. Well, and that's the, that's the cross pollination of like math and music. You know, there's, I mean, music is so mathematical. Um, but, uh, but he just does these equations, he can solve equations in his head. It's just insane. And, uh, and, and he just got, he was playing with a Rubik's cube one day. Uh, and I was like, man, I tried to solve a cube when I was a kid and just got super frustrated with it. And, um, yeah, it gave me no value whatsoever in my life. Just, just frustration. And, uh, and then he said, look, it's just, all it is, is, you know, memorizing these algorithms and then applying them in a, you know, specific sequence, et cetera, et cetera. And so I got deep into Rubik's cubing for, you know, maybe a couple of months or something. And it just was a fascinating process. So for that, um, I just, um, you know, I, I monitored, I'd call it monitoring the minutes, uh, okay. you know, just, just jumping in and, and measuring the minutes of uh, how much time I'm putting in, uh, whether that's research and development, you know, watching a YouTube tutorial or a, whatever platform uh, of choice for this one, it was YouTube because you can get away with, with the free platforms with, uh, right. you know, Rubik's cubing because there's millions of tutorials out there. But, uh, you know, so whether it's research and development or actually, you know, applying it, practicing, uh, whatnot. Um, yeah. So I'm, you know, measure my minutes in that. Um, and when you say you're you know, measuring your minutes, what does that actually look like? Like, do you well, have I, a timer or? I, you have yeah, a... I, yeah, I keep it super simple. I find that it's got to be incredibly simple to, well, it doesn't have to be, but depending on where you're at, the, the simpler, the better uh, for, uh, for consistency purposes. So, I mean, we're all busy people. If we want to incorporate a new skill in our lives, it's like, all right, well, you know, when am I going to have an hour to practice that or three hours to do that or a weekend or whatever, you know, it's just like, but the reality is, is those giant chunks of time very rarely come. So if we have the, the, the small slivers of time, we can insert with seven minutes here, nine minutes there, 17 yeah. minutes there, whatever. Um, so I keep it simple. I put the date, um, I put the activity and I put the number of minutes and I use my um, smartphone and I just start and stop. And I oftentimes will be squeezing certain things in between, you know, client calls or on flights or whatever. So I kind of gauge what skills I'm going to be acquiring um, uh, uh, dependent on my lifestyle and what I'm doing. Uh, so mm -hmm. I'm doing, you know, for me, for example, and I don't, you know, this will resonate, but I, yeah, I do around 50 ish, around 50 presentations a year. So I'm on, I'm on the plane every week, you know, a couple of times. Uh, you know, I go there and back for those of you who didn't do the math, uh, but, uh, <laughs> uh, but, uh, but, 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 uh, so, so I'm on the airplane a lot, you know, and, uh, and so I've got time to do, you know, to, you know, to acquire new skills. That's perfect time for me when I'm, it's like forced time for me to, to learn something, um, where I have to be sitting, I have to be still, I have to be silent, you know, so I'm not practicing saxophone on the, on the airplane. Uh, though I do get requests often to <laughs> on the airplane because uh, uh, I travel with my sax. Um, uh, there was something I was going to come back, and I apologize if I'm, I have a very busy brain. So when I get a question, I have, I'm have i inundated with tons of different ways to go. So I'm trying to streamline it here for everybody. Uh, so bear with me. Uh, it's okay. And we'll take a break in just a moment to let you catch up with yourself. To too. breathe. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, it's like it's like that, that moment where you just go through life, and it's like, and then all of a sudden, it just catches up and you're like, oh, oh, I understand those last 12 points. <laughs> the, 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 the big one, and, and currently I'm, I'm working on um, some of my, my, I think my favorite skill right now is leadership. Um, and uh, and I, I noticed in some of the comments there, like, you know, uh, some of the love for the title of soft skills, you know, and I put, saw some people said they're essential skills, you know, and they're, you know, life skills or whatnot. And I, I completely agree with that. Um, some skills are so hard to measure. Like, how do you measure leadership? You know, how do you measure some of these? How do you measure um, the skill of patience? I mean, that's definitely a skill, you know, and some people like are naturally more patient than others or whatever, but that's definitely a skill that we can, that we can learn and develop. Mm -hmm. uh, and, um, and so for me, I have, uh, I have a very, I have a very simple technique that I do with some of these, these skills that are, that are more difficult to quantify. And, um, and for example, leadership, because right now I'm, I'm working on leadership a lot. And I imagine a lot of people uh, that are joining us today are in some form of leadership uh, in, in your lives, whether that's, you know, you're a parent, <laughs> you know, which is definitely leadership or you're, 
you know, uh, managing other people, uh, you know, in whatever way, shape or form capacity you're in. But for, for, for me, um, I might set the intention at the top of the day and do this in, in less of a spreadsheet form, like the minute monitor, I was saying, uh, this is kind of more of the journal approach, um, where I will just write today. I'm committed to fill in the blank, uh, cultivating the skill of leadership, which, oh, it has so many sub skills. Look, I mean, that's listening and, 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 and I mean, and you can deconstruct everything, right? Deconstruct mm -hmm. everything. Like if you want to create, let's, de let's deconstruct this. Let's deconstruct the overview skill of the title of leadership and just take it into, I want to create more rapport with people, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, rapport can be deconstructed even more. Okay. Well, what is rapport? Well, we can isolate that and say, well, rapport is really um, memorization, right? It's um, timing. It's uh, it's um, uh, uh, there's, there's so many sub skills. Cause if we can memorize, so maybe we're, we're doing more, you know, mnemonic training, you know, to increase our memory so that we can remember what people say, remember their names, remember a story they told us. And then later in an hour or a week or a year, we can recall that we can call back to that. And mm -hmm. that is the power. And that's, um, uh, uh, that's such a powerful tool to create rapport when people feel like they're heard, mm -hmm. um, like you really hear them, uh, then you, you reflect that back to them. They, they are with you. I mean, you know, think about some, somebody that remembers your name, you know, if you have a, you know, if you, if whatever, if you go to the coffee shop, you know, uh, you know, and, and, and you go in and the, the, the person there remembers your name, you know, that's such a cool feeling, you know, we love that. Uh, so, totally right, so Bill. So, so coming, so coming, so bringing that back in and then I'll stop talking and we can all breathe. Um, <laughs> what I do is I sent this, this simple, simple technique at the top of the day. I set the intention today. I'm committed to fill in the blank. And then throughout the day, I've got that on the forefront of my mind, right? With everything that I'm doing, whether it's emailing, whether it's client calls, whether it's live coaching, whether it's parenting, whatever it is, then at the end of the day, um, that could be at the five o'clock thing when you punch out. Cause we all punch out at five o'clock, right? We're all entrepreneurs here. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> um, uh, but, uh, but, but, um, yeah, right. But, uh, but, but, but at the end of the day, whatever that means to you, um, you know, or to me, I take that moment and then I just reflect back and I say, Oh, today I incorporated that skill in this, this, and this, and this. And that's such a simple technique to do. And then the next day, again, you know, kind of a call back to what I was touching on earlier, then we reflect back to that. And it's that reflection period that's so critical. Um, and I reflect back and say, this is how I did it. This was optimal or suboptimal. This is how I'll learn from that mistake um, or reincorporate uh, that particular successful thing that I did uh, into my life the, the next day. So you, you set an intention, some kind of focus, and yeah. then, uh, you know, you're, you're physically writing it down or logging it on your phone or whatever. Yep. And then you go about your day, yep. not doing anything to track it. And then like at the end of the day, you write down like how you did, or you write down what, what, what is um, it that you're doing for that reflection? Yeah, it can, it can be any, it's, it's not, it doesn't have to be that structured. The idea that I say is I want to write down uh, three to five moments that um, I'm aware of how that, how I was cultivating that skill or using that skill. So right. it might be, let's take the skill of listening. Okay. There were three moments in the day where I actually was consciously listening to somebody and, and in return, I heard them, uh, uh more deeply. And then I was able to, uh, relate to them more and reflect back information. So I, I think of like three times that I, uh, that I was, you know, conscious of, of, of improving that skill or, uh, working on developing that skill. Great. And then you just set a new thing the next day, um, based uh, it, on that feedback. Oh, there's some, well, you know, I mean, it's all about the cycles, the cycles, cycles of life. It's, um, it's all about cycles. Look, the external cycles, the internal cycles, uh, there's so many cycles happening, uh, all around us, whether it's, a you know, the seasonal cycles, the, uh, eating and digestion cycles, the sleep cycles, <laughs> the political cycles, the, the cycles. I mean, there's so many cycles that are happening. So um, it can be, you know, you can measure that. Um, uh, you know, you can do, for example, uh, this week for these five days or seven days or how often you're going to do it. I'm going to do the same skill every day for these seven days. Let's just take seven. Um, 
And then at the end of the week, um, I'm going to reflect back and then I'm going to analyze the data and I'm going to see where the patterns lie here. What are the patterns here? And what can I learn from these patterns? Oh, every time I talk to this type of person, I say the wrong thing. Oh, whatever it is, what, you know, and I analyze that data and, um, and, and then, um, and then, and then I can say, now I can assess the situation and say, after these seven days, I feel that I've gotten to a place where I'm comfortable with my, my, my current, uh, uh, level of, of expertise in the skill. I'm going to move on to another skill or, I'm going to keep doing this skill for another three weeks. And then I'm going to analyze it again and reflect back uh, on the macro level uh, after a month. Right. So we can, and it's, and it's, look, it's, it's quantifying these things in terms that we already know Mm -hmm. the day, the week, the month, the quarter, the year, these things like that. So ways that we're already, you know, uh, conditioned to think. Um, these, these, these time frames or chunks that we're conditioned to, to think in. Uh, and so we can use it in there. Great. Hopefully well, that's, uh, that's awesome. Um, we haven't talked about video stuff just yet. Uh, I'd like to take just a, a moment for station identification and, um, and then we'll come back and talk a little bit about video stuff as well as get to all of the questions that are, uh, that are in the, the question function there. If you want to ask a question, um, please, you know, input that. Also feel free, everybody, to share this out if you're enjoying this conversation with Broncar. Um, there are maybe some other people, some peers that you know that would enjoy this conversation as well. Um, you know how to how to do the Twitter thing and, uh, and get it out there, so please do. And this will give you a moment, Broncar, to scroll through the chat. Uh, we will still hear you, by the way. So if there was any soundtrack that you cared to contribute, it would be welcome, not that any is required. Uh, and I will see if I can do the screen sharing thing in another browser so that I can then share this, I hope. Oh, uh, yeah. Window. Wow. There we go. That's so cool. 65 per day. Um... I don't know if I can do that at the same time and read the script. I don't think I can. Okay, we'll go back to, um, you're watching TLD cast. <laughs> uh, there are uh, a lot of great conversations like this happening. They're happening every day uh, from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. Pacific. And this community is uh, uh, learning and development professionals from all over the world. We have a, uh, a membership level. This is, of course, free conversations every day. But if you're interested in being a member of TLDC, uh, you can join with the link that um, hopefully Craig will put in the chat there. Sorry, as I'm bumbling. Uh, yes, Luis has got it. Great. And um, we also have a Slack channel for conversations like this that are continue, you know, in between all of the uh, the live streaming events. And um, in the upper right-hand corner of your screen, you can invite more people to come sit in here with you. Uh, thank you, Craig. Um, this is a, a volunteer thing here. Um, this, is, this is all learning and development professionals coming together to support each other in community, uh, to be some of what Broncar was talking about, that network of peers, um, maybe even a place to find mentors or to find good advice about um, moving on in your learning and development career arc. Um, certainly we talk about uh, video stuff and, and we'll get to that every video Friday. Um, and I'm going to call that our station ID. Sorry, I couldn't share the TLDC screen so well, but you know what that logo looks like. Um, there's, uh, there's more live events coming up all the time. Um, so video. Broncar. Um, yes, we are, the, we are live right now in video. Yes, <laughs> we are live in video. And um, and in your keynote presentations, you support what you're what you're doing in with video as mm-hmm. you're uh, as you're on stage speaking, and you know and and giving illustrations such as playing the saxophone. Um, how many days did it take you to play saxophone on stage? By the way. Uh, oh yeah, that was a fun adventure. I did, um, uh, 
and people are going to go, what? I don't believe it. Uh, I did 63 days, actually, 63 days from never touching a horn to putting it on stage as an entertainer uh, headliner on the Disney cruise ship. Uh, the Disney, which was the first ship I put it on? I think it was the Wonder. Uh, I was a guest entertainer for Disney for, for a lot of years. And, um, and so, yeah, it was 63 days uh, to get it up and running. And let me tell you, though, on 63 days, it was not beautiful. It was not beautiful. There were a lot of squeaky notes. And uh, um, the audience was very forgiving. <laughs> but, but honestly, that was the highlight of the show. I mean, like all these other skills I've been doing for, you know, I mean, thousands and thousands of hours, you know, to cultivate, you know, storytelling, comedy, uh, juggling or beatboxing or whatever it is. Uh, but the, that skill, because I was so like um, less developed on it, they uh, they had this um it was it was very vulnerable and so they they really resonated with it but yeah 60 63 days to put it up uh on stage and and become a professional saxophone player in other words i got literally got paid to be uh play the sax <laughs> and uh, uh i i'm not sure if i'm sharing the right link if you have a better one for the uh the video that's making its way around facebook these days um to to throw in there uh let me know do you or should i put mine in Oh no! Put put yours in. I I don't have it. Yeah, I mean that's. <laughs> um, I'd I'd love to be able to share this in the in Crowdcast, but then there's no audio when I do, and uh, so so you might need to adjust your screen. Um, but this is an example of um, of well, Broncar, why don't you tell us of of what of the the beatbox baby video? Oh, um. The, yeah, so my that's <laughs> such a such a weird happening. My son uh, and I, Elijah, who's two, we shot a little video, um, and where well, my wife filmed it, Cindy, and um, I hate calling her my wife, Cindy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> if anything, she has ownership over me. Like, yeah, she's the, <laughs> he is the ringleader by all means. I'm just the loud one. Um, but uh, she she filmed a video of, of my son and I uh, beatboxing in the in the high chair uh, and it just went like super viral and it was really odd. And in the first 24 hours, I got a million views and it's got over a hundred million views now. And uh, we're getting calls from the Ellen DeGeneres show and like all of this crazy stuff. Like it's just been a wild, unpredicted uh, a series of events that happened. Um, and, uh, yeah, so it's just been, been kind of bizarre. It's been a bizarre run. Yeah. Yeah. Well, while this was a kind of wild and unpredicted thing that happened, it's not your first time using video to reach people and, uh, not your first time like being on TV or, or things like that. Um, the, the video for those of you who haven't seen it, um, I, I posted the link there, but it's, uh, it's a very home, home video kind of video. Um, and Broncar, I believe this is the second <laughs> such video that you shot. Is that right? Uh, the, that's with, with Elijah, the viral? With the, the, the beatbox, um, the beatbox baby video. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, we, it was one video that we shot six months ago or something like that. And, uh, and yeah, when Sam says it's, it's, uh, I mean, it is low production. I mean, it's like, it's like the smartphone, not even like shot the right way you know it's it's uh <laughs> it's not even horizontal and uh and sit, we got so much flack for that and it's just like there's no sound there's no lighting it's just like you know no production but uh yeah we, it was six months ago and it went we posted it just shared it because my mom was like hey that's a cute video you should share that and Cindy was like i'll share it and uh and then it went crazy and abc did a story on us cnn called us fox called i mean it was like it was insane. It was like it, that day people were getting my cell number. And I'm like, how are you guys getting my cell phone number? This is freaking me out. Like I actually was uncomfortable and um, which takes a lot because I'm, I'm pretty comfortable <laughs> with just about anything. But um, uh, and then and then it kind of like died. It got, you know, 50 million views or something like that. And then it died and then it just kind of went away. And uh, and then like last week, it just popped up again and somebody posted it and it just went. Shoom. Yeah. So. It was the same video up, 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 uploaded uh, from different uh, uh, platform or different different uh, organizations. And you've been um, you've been featured like uh, on GoPro videos and stuff like that. Um, 
yeah. you had in the past of a video a week that you were doing on YouTube. Um, you've also used video for learning and building video courses and stuff like that. I was yeah. wondering if you could say just a little bit about your process for using video or how it is that you make the decision to do that um, and any kind of production um, notes that you'd give. Yeah, yeah, great, great questions. Uh, man, video is such a powerful tool uh, to connect with. It's so, uh, it's it's incredible. Um, and and yeah, there's been yeah stuff from yeah GoPro or Tonight Show or all that fun fun activity to uh, to the <laughs> high chair baby beats, you know. It's like mm -hmm. um, uh, and everything in between. Yeah, I did 52 videos in 52 weeks a few years back. Uh, so that really got me in the groove of shooting videos. Uh, there were some specific with uh, with the influence of a really brilliant human being. Um, I won't say his name, uh, but uh, Sam, you can say his name. It's okay. Sam, 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 <laughs> Sam. Uh, we shot a, a we shot a specific video, that, and this is kind of an interesting story. And then take me we'll go back to the production side of things, um, and remind me of that. But we shot a video, and hopefully this will add value to y'all. We shot a video with a very specific goal, uh, and that goal was to do um, this I did this crazy juggling thing where I bounced seven balls invertedly in rhythm, blah, blah, blah. Okay, but we shot it in a specific way with a GoPro camera, and we filmed, like, underneath it and then above it and all these cool angles, and it was in my garage, like, you know, very, very poor production quality, but, yes. but because of this brilliant human being, Sam um, – we we uploaded it and we we cut it down it was you know 60 seconds or something we cut it down and we put you know juggling seven balls with gopro or something like that in the title within like a handful of hours we got contacted by one of the gopro representatives and they said hey we love this video we'd love for you to shoot it outdoors with better lighting somewhere cool uh and then we'd love to you know feature it on our channel so we said awesome all right so we um, went to uh, Venice Beach and filmed, um, and I'll actually share the si an extra bit here because a lot of it is, I find in making things happen is that little extra bit of uh, tenacity that we have that's kind of makes or breaks us. We went and filmed uh, all day uh, at uh, Venice Beach, and um, and I had just gotten over this horrible head cold. I remember it was just like I was not high energy. It was just a rough spot. Came home, viewed the video, and we had a crew, we had like three people come and film. Uh, we looked at the footage, and Cindy and I were just like, "This isn't this isn't what we were looking for. We didn't get it." Mm -hmm. And Cindy and I went back the next day and did the same thing over again, just her and I, because we were like, "This isn't it." And we filmed all day, and then we nailed it. We got it. We sent it to GoPro. They loved it. They cut it up. They did their thing. It was on a GoPro commercial. Like they shared it on their people. Got you know whatever a few hundred thousand views or something. Um, and that was cool. And then we got, Hey, here's some GoPro stuff, cameras or whatever, you know, it's like, it wasn't like a gig, you know? Um, but then we had the, um, somebody saw that footage and then said, this is really cool. We love to feature that, um, in our commercial. And, um, and so they said, you know, do you have the rights? Blah, blah, blah. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Literally all we did was send them, the the original files and then they mixed it into their uh commercial and then it was a, a super bowl commercial uh and this was two years ago uh so it was um featured on a super bowl commercial <laughs> it was just like and the cool thing is we had put all this front work like so and, and this is the thing where it's not linear it's so hard to measure this stuff you know mm -hmm. it's so hard i mean and we can analyze the data right we can analyze it as much as we can um, you know, I'm not trying to say it's like mystical or far out or anything like let's ground it as much as we can. Right. But, um, it, it's hard to quantify this stuff, just like the essential skills we were talking about earlier. Um, I did 52 videos in a year. Like none of those videos got more than a couple hundred views or something, you know, it was like, okay, great. But because of that, I was building my chops up so that when the timing was right, I was ready to walk through that next door, hit that next plateau, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, which was the GoPro thing. And mm -hmm. so I had done the time and energy, logged it, gotten better at production, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. And then when that opportunity came, we were ready to capitalize on it, you know? And so then it seemed effortless because we did nothing essentially to go from this step down here 
uh, to like this step up here. Yeah. You know, we did nothing in here. You, yeah. Nothing, yeah. you know, nothing at all. It was, here's the file. Okay. Dropbox. Great. <laughs> yeah. Um, How and, many years and, to overnight success? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that was that. I'll, let me pause there and see if you have any questions, comments, concerns about that. Well, I, I want to make sure that we get to the questions that people have asked and we've got like a little less than 10 minutes left. Perfect. Um, so I think I'm just going to toggle over to that now. And, um, and you know, if we could, we could keep them maybe a little uh, faster to, to answer. Um, so what, when is the industrial age model for grade school and high school finally going to be replaced in your opinion, O oh guru Broncar? Oh gosh, that's hilarious! And man, I am right on point. I don't know who that was. Who was that? I, I'm not Craig. Really mad at it. Yeah. Craig. Hey, great question, Craig. Woo! Oh man, uh, I, I I wish it was now. I wish it was right now. You know, um, I, yeah the the old the old model for learning just isn't relevant anymore. It's just yeah. Uh, and I see I see some comments about uh, homeschooling there. Um, yeah, this is this is stuff that we're thinking about as well. You know, it's like, we really, we don't want to do homeschool, but we do like it's yeah. Or Montessori or, you know, yeah. yeah. And that's a deep, that's a deep discussion. I don't think we can even start that discussion in the <laughs> next eight minutes. Uh, okay. okay. We'll, we'll call that one done um, and go for one that was uploaded there in the chat, uh, which is, do you have any recommendations for getting started as a keynoter or, or, you know, listed with definitely. a group to be able to do the kind of work that you're doing. Yeah, definitely. That would be to check out uh, National Speakers Association, um, NSA. But you have to say National Speakers Association before you say NSA. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, branding um, issue there. Yeah. Yeah, National Speakers Association is a fantastic organization that's been um, added so much value to my life. And uh, depending on what part of the world you're in. Uh, there's, uh, in, in the United States, there's chapters in a lot of the, the major cities, um, uh, around the country. And, uh, we have a great one in Georgia that I'm the incoming president for. And that has been such a, such an amazing organization that's added a lot of value and gotten me around like-minded, uh, people, maybe it's introductions to bureaus and cu cultivating relationships with agents, mm -hmm. uh, or just being around other human beings doing the same thing, having the same successes and struggles, uh, being able to, to benchmark off of, um, you know, uh, advanced uh, keynoters, people that are that are doing it well, uh, lots of breakout sessions, just incredible stuff. And there's annual uh, conferences and it's just such a great, great um, organization. Yeah. Great. Thanks for that. Yeah. Um, I'll get to uh, another thing here in the chat. Uh, what kind of follow-up or evaluation do you do to see how well your presentations have stuck or what people have accomplished as a result? Yeah, that's a, that's a really tricky one. I've, I've seen a lot of things, you know, work for different people depending on what their content is and who their audience is. Uh, sometimes, you know, follow-up is, 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 is really can be very challenging. Um, you know, I do, at, at the end of at the end of my presentations, I do uh, we use lead digits mm -hmm. so we can get people to text. I'm sure everybody knows what that is, but so we get people to text in. Yeah, for those who don't, that's when you text a number and then you get a text back and then you sign up for an email list or there's some kind of survey or something like that. Yep. And so what we do is when they text in, um, uh, we send them like some tools and techniques to help accelerate their learning. And it's, you know, then they, then they're in, uh, in, involved kind of in our community. So through that, I get a lot of feedback from people, um, that, that are then in our, in our community, our virtual community. Um, that's, that's a really good way to, to keep that, 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 uh, contact with people. Um, unfortunately in this industry, it's, there's a lot of, um, people that I just never see again, you know, mm -hmm. and, and never hear from again, it's getting better with the, um, you know, all the digital stuff that's happening. So, um, yeah, uh, to, 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 to measure that and, and keep that contact. Yeah. But we're, yeah, good, good. So, so you're not necessarily like tracking. These are the number of people I talked to. These are the responses I got. It was this ratio kind of thing. It's more like anecdotal of these people connected with me and great. Yeah. Now, you know, they're part of, this circle and you get feedback from them, but not 
the people that just kind of walked in and walked out. Yeah. Yeah. Essentially. And, and there's also surveys that happen, um, you know, and I know some people that do surveys live, uh, you know, for different, different things, but, um, like if I come to a conference or something like that or a summit, you know, then, uh, they'll have a, a, they'll have a uh, survey that they send out to the attendees. And so I'll get feedback there, uh, feedback that I want to hear and feedback that I don't really <laughs> prefer to hear, but it's always good. Those are the biggest lessons is when we can get out of our own way and then accept that stuff, you know, cause, um, not everybody's, not everybody's going to like everything all the time. And, there's different types of feedback that we can receive. One is where sometimes it's just a projection of the self where it has nothing to do with us that are on the platform. And it's completely about this person, kind of like the comment earlier of getting jealous of somebody mm -hmm. uh, that was in there of doing something like better than you or more advanced or whatever. Uh, sometimes there's that kind of projection that happens and we got to let that go and just, okay, that whoosh, yeah. that's going right out there. But I think you'd be better if you had more hair, by the way, Broncar, that would oh, make yeah. you better. Thanks. Yeah, exactly. Right. It's like, okay, we're really, what, what's, what, what's your intention? What are we, what are we doing? You know? So, um, but then there's some feedback that's incredibly valuable, you know, um, uh, that can be really painful to receive. Um, and I'm definitely, um, as a lifelong learner, I'm always looking to, uh, develop my communication skills and, and, and grow as much as I can, uh, to, uh, you know, to help educate and, and lead and teach as, as effectively as, as, as I can. Yeah. Well, um, closing up here for today, uh, for those who would like to connect with you uh, online or, or whatever ways that you've got to, to be a part of the community that you're creating and, um, and to learn a little bit more about what you do, um, what's the best way to do that? Yeah, my website. Uh, it's a great way to keep in keep in touch. Uh, we have um, all kinds of cool stuff. And please keep in touch because I, I don't know a whole lot about this, you know, y'all and the community. I mean, obviously, Sam, we've talked about it, but uh, so, I mean, Marco you, is threatening to give out your cell number. Don't do that, Marco. Oh no, <laughs> <laughs> no, please, no. <laughs> you're gonna freak me out again. No, but. Uh, uh, obviously like Facebook and all that stuff, I'm there, but my website is broncar.com and that's a uh, easy way, uh, to get in touch. Um, there's, uh, uh, I mean, if you want to get involved with the community, um, like on there, we have, uh, Cindy and I, my wife, uh, we have a learning course on there, um, that we've developed and, um, uh, and then, you know, there's some blogs and all that fun stuff and you can get in, in into our virtual community that way. Uh, and then also please reach out like via Facebook um, or, or email to uh, if, if, if you want to continue conversation. And I love learning from people. And, and, and so please, if you have ideas or collaborative ideas or whatever, I'm super open to, to hearing from you all. So, um, yeah. And should I put my website in there or do you yeah. want to put it in? Go ahead and yeah. do that. And, um, and we didn't actually say anything to, uh, plug your, your book yet, but maybe we, you, you could tell us just a little thing about the course that's related to the book and what it is that you've got going with that. Oh yeah. You got the book. Good, good job. Sam. Yeah, I, I got it. It was on the internet. So, you know, I picked it up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the yeah, bold achievement method, um, is, is, is the, the title of the, the first book there. And uh, that's basically what a lot of my keynote um, revolves around and also like, you know, kind of learning methodology, uh, not kind of learning methodology, period. Uh, and um, and uh, that's what our, you know, online course is, is, is about and the keynote's about. And yeah, I think, and I've already talked a, a good bit about, about that. So I don't want to yeah. rank again in the last... 60 seconds. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we are, we are at time. Anybody who's got, you know, meetings to go get to or whatever. Now's your cue. Um, and I just want to say thanks again, Broncar, for being a part of this community today and, yeah. uh, and sharing a little bit about the, the vulnerabilities of your learning journey and drawing that out in our community so that we can get stronger and we can, we can function better as a group of peers and we yeah. can really, um, you know, learn and develop ourselves for uh, a better learning and development role for 
that we serve in all of our organizations. And, um, and also for your use of, of video in like your video course and all the, all the things that are happening. We didn't really talk so much about video. Um, I'll just say uh, briefly as a video consultant to Broncar uh, at times, um, he doesn't know very much about the technical parts. And uh, <laughs> true story. <laughs> uh, but it has not prevented him from having real success in a number of ways, uh, you know, like, you know, Super Bowl commercials or viral videos on Facebook kind of thing. Like, uh, it hasn't prevented him from reaching an audience with his focus of what it is that he's doing and why. So um, thanks again for all that, Broncar. And, and uh, you, I just want to say thank you for everybody that was here. I, I, your time and time and energy is valuable. And uh, thanks for being here and, and listening. I really hope something, uh, some value was added to your life uh, today. And please, please keep in touch because I love learning and growing myself. So just thank you. Great. Um, and, uh, and maybe there's some, uh, some music or something that we could do on the way out. You got anything? Oh, I got, I mean, what do we want? I've got my, I got my, I got my two-year-old son's ocarina here. Uh, sure. I think I should probably wash that out before. I use it. <laughs> uh, yeah. We've got a whole bunch of instruments around. What do we, I mean, I got the flute here. I mean, I, I guess don't know. I'm gonna grab something. Yeah. Yeah. Or I can give you, I'll give you a backbeat. Sure. <laughs> It's hard to be in rhythm across the latency of the internet, but thank you for grooving with us today on TLD Cast. TLD Cast, thank you for being part of the community, putting the C in the TLDC. We'll see you next week. We've got a whole bunch of guests, great guests coming up. Hope to see you sometime, 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 like 8 a.m. Pacific. <laughs> See everybody. Thanks so much. Take care, Bronco. All right. Bye. Bye.